Hey there, homosis and homies. How do you do? I'm Frank. I'm going to show you today how the new WireGuard add-on for HasIO slash Home Assistant works. And I've been working on this thing for, I don't know, nine months or something, like like bearing a child. And I've, I've been working on this a, a, a freaking long time. I think I rewrote this add-on from scratch or adjusted a lot of things in the past nine months, like five times or so. And I kept getting back at this thing because VPN is probably the most requested add-on for HasIO. And up until now we have, I don't know, there's a zero tier and there are some, some add-ons out there which do some open VPN stuff, but it's not, it's not like the experience I want VPN to have on HasIO. So I've been working on this quite a while and I'm, I've reached the point where I'm happy. So WireGuard is a VPN solution for HasIO. Um, um, it's now available for HasIO. WireGuard can be used virtually on any device. And it's a new new VPN kind of solution. It's fast, it's modern, it's... Well, it's a tagline, right? So it's fast, modern, secure a VPN tunnel. And it truly is. And it's now coming to HasIO. So today I'm going to show you on what, what, what it does, how it works and how, how you can set it up. So this is a quick start video on how to get this thing going. I'm going to take you into um, a simple Raspberry Pi running HasOS and HasIO with Home Assistant. I'm going to install WireGuard. I'm going to set up my phone, which is an iPhone right here. Um, and I'm going to connect my, my actual system to it as well. So let's get into it right now. Uh, let's switch to my desktop. Here we go. Welcome to my desktop. And today we're going to talk about WireGuard. This is WireGuard. The WireGuard website has a lot of documentation on what's going on, so you should check it out. It's WireGuard.com. Um, and this is the add-on, actually, uh, that's on GitHub. And there's the documentation, uh, something about WireGuard and installation steps. So these are the steps we're going to take, like give or take it. Uh, I'm going to make it a quick one. The configuration, uh, some more examples, uh, and whatever every configuration parameter does. So every option is available and not all options are listed in the configuration. We'll see that in a second, but you can add it and you can actually like tune every thinking piece of uh, WireGuard if you want to. So if you're more experienced, uh, this add-on will actually allow you to do pretty freaking awesome stuff to be honest but by default I made it in a way that it's usable and friendly for like everybody so let's go to my HasIO setup this is a simple Raspberry Pi running HasOS with HasIO um, and it runs well home assistant of course I've installed the ID add-on to uh, get to my files but if you use I don't know uh, Samba or uh, I don't know SCP or maybe use Visual Studio Code as the add-on it's all fine they will work but you need something to access files and we'll see why in a second uh, let's go into the HasIO tab here let's go to the add-on store and let's pick up WireGuard. Here we go. WireGuard is here. Uh, I'm using a development version, so the version name is looking a little bit weird. Uh, that's because this video is recorded while it's not released yet. So uh, in your case, there will be just the normal stable version here. Let's install it. WireGuard is truly small. It's just 15 megabytes from Docker Hub. So the, the Docker image running in this add-on is just 15 megabytes uh, and it contains all the data like the old program, it's already installed on my Raspberry Pi 3 here, so that's pretty quick. Let's go into the configuration. You can ignore this warning, by the way, that's because this is a development version, it will not show up on yours. Here we go. So important to know is you have to set an external URL, so the external name where it connects to. So in this case, the example is myautomatedhome.dns.org, but that should be replaced by yours. For example, I don't know, my home. Uh, .dns.org or whatever you have. This is for the clients to know where to connect to. I'm going to change, change this for the example to hasio.local because this is a, an example running locally. Um, it's just a demo, but it should, in your case, it should contain the external URL. You have to set up peers. Peers are like the clients. That's probably the worst explanation ever, but for the example, let's assume peers are clients and that's probably how the most of you, us are going to use it anyway. You have to give it a name. So let's say my iPhone. Here we go. And let's save it. This is basically all the configuration you need to do from the beginning. But there are some things in here that you might 
look out for. This is the address of the server, server.address. This IP range should not collide with the IP range you have already in your home. So if you have like 192.168.1.x, you're safe at this point. Uh, but if this is the IP range you're using, you have to change the IP range. Um, I choose an exotic one as default, so it should be safe for most of us, but you can change it to your liking as long as it doesn't collide with any of the IP ranges you have at home. This is the IP address of the peer itself, so this is the client. In this case, my iPhone will get this IP address, which is absolutely fine for me at this demo. Let's save it. Um, that's it. You can tweak the port if you like, um, but this, that's about it. Let's start the add-on. Here we go. Let's start it. And the first time you start it, it might take a little bit longer because it needs to generate private and public keys. Um, that might take a little bit. On Pi specifically, it will take a bit longer. But it's running. It's starting. Let's wait for the golden message. There we go. There it is. So this is like this IP tables thing. This means it's all starting wire guard and then it's done. This is where it ends. What will happen here in the console, in the log, it will dump like its information about connections every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, if you hit refresh, it will show you a list of the configured clients and their state. Uh, also some server state. So that's pretty helpful in case of debugging. It will show up in a second, we'll see that later on. So now we have to configure my iPhone, right? So how do we do this? Let's pick up my iPhone here. Here's my iPhone. You have to get the WireGuard app from the App Store. So you can find it by searching for WireGuard and install the app right here. Let's open it up. Here we go. This is the WireGuard app. And I have one profile right now, which is my home profile, which is my production system. So in your case, it will be empty probably. But in my case, there's already a profile here, but we're going to add one, this demo profile. Let's hit the plus sign. And the nice thing about this is you can create something from a QR code. And that's basically what the add-on does as well. It generates your configuration files for the client. So let's take a quick look at that. If we go into the IDE, right here, that I've previously set up, uh, there's an SSL folder here. You can find this slash SSL in, in your FTP or in your Samba or wherever, whatever you're using. And there will be a WireGuard folder now containing the private key of the server and containing folders for each client configured. In this case, iPhone. And there's a client that configuration. This is the client configuration file. This can be imported in many, many WireGuard um, clients or even another WireGuard server. And this is the QR code it generated. And this QR code is nice because it's scannable by the iPhone. So let's let's try it out really quick here. Create from QR code. Uh, uh, my green screen. Oh, cool. You can see my green screen now. Okay, never mind. Scan it. It picked it up instantly and let's say call this add-on i don't know or has io has io is probably a better name in this case but yeah whatever you like home has io this is just the name you give it there it is it's it's there so you can open it up and you can see all the settings are here automatically proficient for you so that's pretty nice and easy um, and we can now go ahead and activate it so if we connect uh, connect it should be instantly connecting here we go. It's sending data, it's receiving data, it's connected and all. That's really nice, right? Please bear in mind, this is a local connection. So in this case, it instantly worked. Um, but if you want to reach it from the outside world, you would have to forward a port in your router. So in this case, let's open up. I have an edge router, right? So this is my edge router and let's add a forward port, port forwarding in my router. And then we need a port from WireGuard, which is, let's forget, WireGuard. Here we have the port. You can paste the port in, that's the incoming port. You have to forward UDP, forward it to your HasIO system, which in this case is this IP for me. And this is the destination port and let's call it WireGuard. and apply. So now I've added a remote port forwarding. This is what you need to do when you're exposing it to the outside world, which is kind of the goal of VPN. So you should do this. But for my example, this is a local connection just for the, showing you how the add-on works. So it doesn't matter that much, but this is how you can forward it. Okay, back to here. In here, like I said before, 
in the logs you will see like every 30 seconds it will drop information. So this is WireGuard itself, this is a server and this is one of the peers and it's showing indeed that I'm connecting, connected and data is transferred. So how can you test to see if it actually works? Well, if you open up a browser here and you enter HTTP, HTTP Home Assistant, just, just the Home Assistant itself, it should open up Home Assistant if the thing actually works with me for once. Come on, little beast. There we go. We're connecting to Home Assistant even without like the actual domain name. So this is an internal connection and showing that it works. And by default, it routes all the traffic over here. So even if I visit a website right now, it will go through the VPN tunnel by default. Uh, so you're using your home connection to browse the internet. And if you have a thing like AdGuard Home, uh, you can even use that. So if you look in the documentation of the WireGuard add-on, it will contain hints on how you will uh, can enable your clients to be connected to AdGuard Home at any time. So you will actually have like an ad-free experience on go. That's pretty nice, right? So this is how it works on a mobile phone. Let's say we want to add another thing, like my laptop, for instance, which we're, which I'm recording on right now, right? So let's try, let's open up WireGuard, let's go into the configuration, and let's duplicate this peer. I want to add another client. Here we go. Client name is laptop, here we go. Uh, and I have to give it an IP that that collides with any one of these. So let's say 0.3, which is the next one, that's easy, right? Save it, and let's restart and it should be rebuilding this configuration. The great thing about WireGuard, by the way, is, is that it is like it can roam. So if you change between Wi-Fi networks, it will actually pick up the changes and it will stay connected. So that's cool. And on an iPhone, you can actually force, I'm not sure on Android, I do not have an Android device, but on Android, on iPhone, you can actually enforce it to be used. So you, it will always require the connection. And the way I set it up, by the way, is by um, let me go in here real quick. If you scroll down, you can actually set it to be activated on demand. If you hit edit, you can, yes, I want to configure it. You can configure things manually if you'd like. And you can say, okay, I want to connect to it when I'm on seller, or I want to be always connected even on Wi-Fi. And if you're on Wi-Fi, you could say, okay, um, if I'm on Wi-Fi, I just want to connect always, except when I'm home. So you can add, an exception, for example, your home Wi-Fi, and it will disconnect automatically if you're home. So that's pretty pretty helpful. Meanwhile, in the background, the configuration has been regenerated. If it, let's see if all went well. Looks like it. We already see a status. We can already see my phone has been connected again already. And let's see on how this works on a uh, device right here. Let's remove this little piece here. This was a test. Okay, let's import a new one. It's basically the same procedure. You import a tunnel from file, which is possible if you download the client configuration, or you can just add an empty tunnel here, which will give you like this little pasting thing. Let's go into the IDE. And there should be now an additional folder right here called laptop. It has a QR code, which you cannot use on this device. But yeah, if you have another device, scan it and you will have a second one. Here we have the client configuration. Let's copy this one in. Let's paste it in here. Let's call it Hasio. Here we go. Save it. Then it kind of pops up a question if I will allow it. Allow it. Here we go. There we go. This should be it. Let's connect it. Connecting. Done. We're connecting and there's data flowing. So my laptop is now going through the WireGuard VPN tunnel. And in WireGuard, we should see the same now. Let's go into WireGuard. Let's refresh. Oh, here it is. It's already connected. So this is the ED.3. This is my laptop. It's connected. So that's all to it. So I can already hear a couple of people shouting like, hey, it's not secure to transfer private keys like that. Totally true. If you're up to, I don't know, you want to be more secure, what you actually can do is generate a private key on the device itself pick up the public key and you add it to the configuration. So you can actually set your own public key if you'd like to. So that would be something like, I don't know, public key and then the key 
um, and it will use that. It will not generate its own private key in that case. So there's a lot of documentation on, on our website, uh, on the, the repo here. Every single option is documented. You can even change routes if you like to, if you're up to those things. Um, but yeah, this is basically it. This is what, I, I've, I, what I've been up to, um, creating a simple VPN solution that's secure, that's fast, that actually works and user-friendly, but at the same time as advanced as it can get. And yeah, that's all I have all I have for you right now. I hope you enjoyed this little video. It's a little bit improvised. It's a one take. I'm, I'm, I'm a streamer. If you want to see my stream, go to twitch.tv slash frank or youtube.com slash frank uh, and subscribe and follow me there so you can follow my streams where I develop. I'm not used to making videos like this one. Uh, you probably noticed already, but I'm sorry. Nevertheless, I found it important to show you how it works and how easy it is. Um, if you have any comments, please let me know. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. That's what you have to say, right? And then hit the bell and something. I'm not used to this YouTube crap. <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have more add-on ideas, please let me know. And hope to see you next time. Choo-choo, homies. Bye-bye.